Simcha. You spoke with Kissinger. Well, I'm so glad he approved. So where are the phantoms? Well, when do we get them? Check out what with the Pentagon? Nixon himself promised me. Simcha. Simcha, get the phantoms! Kissinger, a world power in person, warns me. First of all, I am an American. Secondly, I am Secretary of State of the United States. Lastly, I am a Jew. I say that's fine. We read from right to left. <laughs> well, I dreamed of a paradise, so what went wrong? Only when a traveler came back to Vienna to tell the founder of Zionism. But Herzl, there are Arabs in Palestine. Yes. Our cousins. Our blood cousins, if you go all the way back to Abraham. But now, two peoples and one piece of land. And they thought they'd seen the last of us. They didn't want the backwash of the world drifting back in. Why, in the United Nations, the Iraqi foreign minister shook his finger at me and said, Mrs. Meir, go home to Milwaukee. I was backwash from Russia, but Milwaukee was where I grew up. And to Milwaukee came a Jew named Ben Gurion, and he told us of the pioneers in Palestine. He was recruiting for the Jewish Brigade to fight with the British against the Turks and free Palestine for Jews to settle. He said, the Jewish homeman must be a model for the redemption of the human race. I was young, it seemed reasonable. <laughs> Tanks, I can get in Czechoslovakia for 10 million, ammunition, another 10, and so on and so forth, until he said, I must go, yes, to the Jews of the States. I, I said, wait a minute. Leave here now, everything could fall apart. What you can do here, I can't. There, I haven't been in 10 years, but I speak a good American. No, I must go myself. I said, BG, please, put it to a vote. And the exec voted to send me. And Ben Gurion gave in. All right then, go at once, today. I said, today, my coat's back in Jerusalem. Don't even go back to Jerusalem. I said, you want me to go to America naked? He said, whatever helps. Yes. What? No. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I knew it. I knew it yesterday in my bones. All right, all right, all right. Call a meeting. 6 a.m. Tell the others. My generals. Half of my cabinet generals, and not one of them could smell yesterday that today it is war. And when we meet in my office, Dado, my chief of staff, says, I want a full mobilization for a counterattack. But Moshe Dayan, my minister of defense, says, No, again the world will call us the aggressor. Dado says, I also want a full strike. I want to hit them before they hit us. But Dayan says, No, we'll be condemned everywhere. We'll get no help from anyone. How does a housewife decide between generals? <laughs> all right, all right. I'm not a housewife. I say, Moshe. The mobilization must be as Dada wants. And I say, Dada, Moshe's right. In a week, we will need help. And from the Americans. Simcha Dinitz, our ambassador, home from Washington, comes in. I say, Simcha, how soon can you fly back? Golde, eat shum kippel. Nothing's moving. You are to Cyprus. The military will fly you. American Ambassador Keating getting back to me. Well, Mr. Ambassador, our neighbors are visiting us today. Yeah, with Soviet tanks. Now, I got one message for Washington. You tell them that we can strike first and won't. We can. We can and won't. No, no, no. I promise won't. But, Mr. Ambassador, I needn't remind you, we were promised 48 F-4 Phantoms. Thank you. Simcha, the minute you see Kissinger, your first point is, where are the Phantoms? 
Saturday morning and Yom Kippur, and all this in the opening hour. And for lunch, <laughs> citizens of Israel, ordeal by battle has been forced on us again. The Israel Defense Forces, our sons, have entered the fight for our independence, for our freedom, for our survival.